to vote for, I think that individual should come before the committee. He can come down to the basement. He needs to answer the question. And this is a good place to note that House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff has said that investigators might not need to hear from the whistleblower. Because remember, the whistleblower's account was a secondhand account, and they now have heard from people who were on the call. So the whistleblower is no longer critical to the investigation, at least according to Schiff. So in the meantime, uh, amid all of this, President Trump still really wants to know who this person is. Yesterday he said, quote, the whistleblower should be revealed because the whistleblower gave false stories and uh, There are some things standing in the way of this, though, including federal law, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, federal law uh, does protect the whistleblower's identity. That's kind of the point of uh, the, the whistleblower law that, um, you know, is allowing this whistleblower to come forward anonymously. But that has not stopped a lot of speculation, especially on conservative media, uh, Rush Limbaugh, online conservative publications and elsewhere, um, you know, really trying to out this individual. Um, the uh, uh, individual's name has been out there, um, it's not been confirmed anywhere, and the whistleblower's lawyers have not confirmed any of these reports. Um, they also haven't denied any of the reports. But here's what we do know, that this whistleblower is from the intelligence community, and that's basically it. Uh, Trump is trying to change that, though. Trump really wants this person's name to be outed. In fact, Trump said yesterday to reporters that if the media reveals who this whistleblower is, it would be, quote, a public service. So I called up Yale law professor Harold Koch. He was the State Department's legal advisor during the Obama administration, and he described the president encouraging people to out the whistleblower as disgusting. If the net result of passing the Whistleblower Protection Act is that you're singling somebody out for punishment, retaliation, and persecution, then Congress ought to take action to impose penalties on those people who do those kinds of things. So as a country, we find ourselves in a unique position right now, right? So many Republicans ask this individual in order to challenge the whistleblower's motivations. At the same time, we've had a parade of witnesses who have corroborated much of the whistleblower's account of President Trump's July 25 call with Ukraine's president. A call I will say that the president yesterday described as, quote, perfecto. In Paris, Bobby Allen. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. So if the U.S. Supreme Court were to overturn Roe v. Wade, states would have even more power to prohibit abortion. And that means governors and state lawmakers could have the final say. Activists on both sides of the issue are making that point to voters ahead of some key elections tomorrow. As NPR Sarah McCammon reports, those races might offer a preview of how abortion will play in the 2020 elections. On a recent cloudy fall afternoon, Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin stood on the steps of the governor's mansion in Frankfurt, flanked by a couple dozen activists wearing blue t-shirts and holding matching signs that read, I vote pro-life. It took me a while to figure out why well, I keep seeing these blue t-shirts. I wasn't sure <laughs> who you were, but I'm just grateful to you. Bevin, a Republican, was surrounded by activists who've been door knocking across Kentucky on his behalf with the goal of reaching 200,000 voters by election day tomorrow. They've been organized by a major national anti-abortion rights group, the Susan B. Anthony List. The organization has worked to elect conservative U.S. senators and help push through the confirmation of President Trump's Supreme Court nominees, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. SBA List President Marjorie Dannenfelser said she was there to endorse Bevin and other Republicans running for statewide office. Who we know will lead Kentucky into this next chapter of the pro-life movement which is the most important chapter of the pro-life movement since Roe versus Wade. For the first time in decades, the Supreme Court may be on the verge of substantially rolling back the guarantee of a right to an abortion. And now activists like Dannenfelser are looking to state officials like Bevin to support new abortion restrictions. Bevin has been a consistent and vocal opponent of abortion rights in Kentucky, signing a law this year that bans the procedure as soon as cardiac activity can be detected. That law is currently tied up in litigation, but Bevin told supporters he'd like to go further. Here's the thing, it wouldn't bother me one lick if there wasn't an abortion provider in this state, it wouldn't. Bevin may need the support from anti-abortion rights activists as he runs for re-election. He's one of the least popular governors in the country, known for an abrasive style and for clashing with teachers' unions over their pensions. Bevin is facing a formidable challenge from Democratic State Attorney General Andy Bashir. Bashir has been endorsed by some prominent Republicans in Kentucky. Against that backdrop, activists are trying to help Bevin stay in office. 
The SBA list is spending three quarters of a million dollars to support Bevin and other Kentucky Republicans through digital ads and mailers and team.